Okay, now talking about diversification, uh, Tolu Adebisi, who is here on, on Twitter, is saying, you know, he's asking the question, what commodities place the most pressure on the on forex? You know, yeah. PMS. PMS. Yes. Now he's ask, he's saying again, will encouraging the development of modular refineries help reduce pressure? You see, that's on the problem. FX. We seem to ignore just the so primary issues just, and focus on window. I, I, this this is my <laughs> Sorry, this is what <laughs> upsets me with this issue about Nigeria all the time. The issues now, we're talking about rebooting the Nigerian economy, and we're talking about things like, okay, um, um, uh, creating ease of business, as if the business people that are out there trying to do business are all crazy. There's no light, there's trans bad roads, transport. I mean, there are issues you can fix. We know what the issues are. We leave the issues and we focus on things that are not the issues. Now, um, PMS is the biggest uh, uh, drain of... Uh, well, uh, dollars it. in Nigeria, right? We know what to do to fix that. Create refineries and have local production of petrol. We, were, we are the ones that create our crude oil, right? If you have local production of PM, uh, PMS, you remove that um, weight demand. of dollar demand, and you solve that issue. Instead of us to focus on that, we've not. We're accusing people who want to go to America to go and do holiday, whether it is my money or your, it's, it's none of your business what I do with my money, as long as I can have access to do what I want to do with it. Now, another thing, again, we're obsessed about is cheap FX. We want to buy cheap FX for reasons I don't generally understand. If you can't afford it, don't go. Stay. Hmm? The, af uh, the idea about it at the end of the day is that we need to create an economy that works for you and I. At this particular point... The whole scenario has been gamed to favor a certain set of people. This FX thing, this policy we are talking about, BTA, uh, school fees, it will still, we know it will still be gamed by somebody. It is the general context of the way Nigeria is. Can we create a scenario where it works for everybody so that we wouldn't need to do these things is what me I'm asking. Why? Okay, school fees. If I, if, if I don't need to send my child to a foreign university and I send my child to... Unilag, for instance. That's my demand of your, your, your parallel market, right? Or your, your interbank market. Let's focus on the issues. Now, we've not sat down to talk about how are we going to create a long-term sustainability for this thing. We've not done that. What we've done is, oh, you guys can buy uh, FX to travel now. And everybody's going, oh, hey, we've come down from 500 naira to 400 naira. 400 naira is the, in my own estimation, is the actual parallel market rate. When it was going to 500 was because we were going crazy at some point between uh, um, December and, and January. We we're just going crazy in that market. But that's the real rate. But should we have the parallel market? That's I, the question. I have also said there is no reason. I do not believe there's a reason why we should have BDCs in the first place. I don't believe so. I don't believe there's a reason. I don't think why. I don't understand why. When the CBN governor was uh, the MPC meeting where uh, last year, where it seemed like he said we had floated the currency, when we all thought he, that was what he was saying, but we were wrong. It seemed that we we're going to exit the BDC regime. There was even a time they were suspended for a while, I think, and they were talking about withdrawing their licenses. And a lot of us share that because, I mean, I feel a lot at ease if I go to my bank to buy the dollars. We've heard about people going to the BDCs and they get fake dollars or get fake naira and all those kind of weird stories. I always feel safer if I go into my bank, pay my naira or pay my dollar and get my exchange. Everybody's comfortable with that. So why not work through that, uh, that, that medium of going through the banks? Why we have to have BDCs in the first place, I don't understand. Who is keeping the BDCs alive? Who is funding them on a weekly basis? Is this not still the same CBN? So why are we deceiving ourselves with this whole trying to make it look as if it is it's, it's, okay. it's a Nigerian scenario? Okay. Okay. Mr. Chizia. Let me, let me, let me say that uh, you know, we're talking that we have a crisis on our hands. Crisis in the sense that you know, we have protests. We have protests. And the physical authorities are concerned. You know, people are protesting us. And this hardship, you know, misery index in the land, you know, is getting out of hand, which is a, which is a fact. Now, the things we're talking about, um, the fuel, like refineries, and so on and so forth, these things are all known. You, you see, the, the problem about this country, some of us have been here long enough. When we had SAP, and we had the SAP uh, program in 1986, mm -hmm. 
All these things we're talking about, refineries and so on, diversifying the, the, the base of the economy, the economy base is diversified. We're talking about diversifying the base, uh, foreign exchange yeah. yes, base. It's, it's all there. But you see, the, the, the problem in this country is that there's no sustainability. And so now, you see, this is happening because the, 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 the droughts, you know, the, the oil crisis, the inflow of foreign exchange, is, is lasted a bit relatively much longer. Normally, it's, uh, it's a, a few months, and then uh, you have your know, so 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 reverse, yeah. and then we're back to normal. But this time, it's been on for two years, it's been on for three years, and so on, so we're having this crisis. So all these things are all known, you know, and then, but then it's not been implemented. Oh, those are the issues. But now you have a crisis. You have a crisis. And then so people are people, you know, the economy is going down, we don't have employment, we're not being employed, and then the inflation is rising, and so on and so forth. So you need to have some quick fix. Now you talked about multiple rates, you know. Again, you know, those things are incidental. It, it is not normal. You go to an economy, you can't go to Britain and have uh, five rates of, uh, you know, my pound. They don't talk about that. But as long as you have issues, you have crisis on your hands, and you have been to allocate, you know, like it is, uh, you know, allocation, demand management, and so on and so forth, those are symptomatic of our present con condition. And sort of not, not much can do about that. Okay. Uh, let me quickly read uh, what Moffat Koriko uh, sent uh, email is saying part of the problem with the Naira is perception, perception management. The present government started by talking down the economy without discounting the poor economic fundamentals like a weak manufacturing sector. The value of the currency depends on perception of its value, availability and long term prospects. Low prices cannot drive down the Naira this much. Do not forget that Nigerians abroad remit about $26 billion every year. The new policy will work if we are bullish about our prospects. So, what do you, what's your take? And I mean, that's, that's, that's bang on, you know, I mean, that's bang on. Um, a, lot, a lot of it, like I said before, it's all about perceptual management. Uh, however, you know, we need to talk about the fact that, you know, um, we, have, we know the fundamental problems. I mean, we've been talking about refineries for, for forever. However, you know, when, when you have a problem uh, and, and it takes a long while for you to fix it, you've got to also worry about, about, about existential issues. The Naira was facing existential issues. As we speak, there are people who still say that the Naira needs to be devalued, right? And, and again, remember what I said, 520 made Naira the, 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 the cheapest currency, the most, one of the most worthless currencies in Africa. Is that where we want to go? You know, but now in terms of BDCs, I would say BDCs actually are for tourism. And whereas we're not a very big uh, tourist country, uh, but we have our returnees maybe every other season, you know, what we don't need is we don't need 3,300 BDCs, right? Maybe 100, maybe 200 BDCs around the country. But the, 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 the central bank now has said that banks can actually open uh, branches in, in airports so that they can deal with some of these issues. In the whole of United Kingdom, they have 125 BDCs. They call them money, change, uh, mo uh, money changers, right? 125 in the whole of UK, and UK is a tourist uh, center. Uh, in the whole of New York, which is also another tourist center, they have 45, including branches. So, you see, and that's the point. Uh, whereas, uh, we, we have gamed the system. That's where I'm about. You know, we've been, we've been gaming the system, saying, listen, you know, we can do anything we want with our money and all that, any sharp guy that can make, you know, make a way and then, you know, but all of us have contributed to this, uh, what's going on. So there's nothing wrong if we say, let's begin to compartmentalize and unpack the problems and begin to solve the problems gradually, given the fact that the, the profound issues are still there, for example, uh, uh, refineries. What do you want to do with that? So are we, all of us seem to be waiting for Dangote now. Away. Hopefully when it comes on stream. <laughs> but can we not do so better than that? Thank you. Can we have, not have three, four, five of such? Can okay, we Tokwe. The, uh, we really you. have to go. Thank you. Thank you so thank much you. for thank joining you. us this morning. Thank you. Yeah. I wanted to read out this, but uh, we'll probably take that later on as we go along. But Tunji, thank you. Your, your, your closing comment in two seconds. Um, I think... Uh, in this whole little uh, spec in the whole scenario, I think the bigger point is for us to create a longer term solution so that we can, you know, know where we are in the Okay, in the longer world. term solution. For you, Dr. Chizik. Well, I think that's a, we are, we, we, I think this, this, this it's a, it's a winner and what's happening now. I think that we have a crisis on our hands, it's an emergency, and we have to fight it, you know. So we're okay. trying to put up the fire on the roof of the house. Thank you so much, Dr. Boniface Cheesy, an economist, and Tunji Andrew, who is also an economist, and of course, Tokwe Fashua in our Abuja studios. Thank you all for joining us this morning.
and we'll take a break so we'll rise we'll be back in a moment